almost pocket-sized scale and unprecedented performance at its budget. B-Link's SER5 Pro with a Ryzen 7 processor can make you forget about traditional desktop PCs. Or not? Let's inspect! Spending less, getting more for your money, that's the ultimate formula everybody is aiming at. And uh, if you're on the hunt for a brand new home computer, thinking about mini PCs can actually be a very good step in this direction. And by the way, nice to meet you, I'm Michael. On the channel we inspect a lot of cool and interesting tech. And indeed, value products have been the primary reason why I started this channel. Uh, that's a brand new coming from B-Link with a very decent hardware setup inside running Windows 11 Pro and in this video we want to unbox, we want to set it up, we want to put it under some pressure with a lot of tests and since uh, the processor inside is the very same as the one inside my video editing laptop I know very well how it's supposed to perform and gonna tell you whether that really is a worthy choice for its price point. B-Link clearly want to put a lot of pressure on every single other device at a budget of around 500 bucks, like the Intel Nuke series, the Minis Forum or the more fine-based devices and all other companies trying to build small-sized computers, let alone the big brands like Gigabyte, Dell, HP Inc and so on. Unboxing this small computer has been some positive experience. A nice box, some specs on the outside. Here we have the 32GB staffed edition with currently the top end for the series processor. User manual is included, might be helpful if you're not familiar with Windows 11 at all. Some accessories are available as well, like the power adapter and a VESA mount. Do not disregard the note stamped on the folio, it's really smart to not connect to any network prior to setting your account up, because Microsoft now enforces you to use email address as a primary account, so if you miss the good old-fashioned way of running the PC local account, keep the PC offline during the initial setup. At the bottom we can read the instructions about entering the BIOS, there's a good amount of ports on the rear and air vents on the sides. Couple of full-sized USB ports, a Type-C and headphone 3.5mm port and the power button are located at the front. Design-wise, it's good, it's surprisingly small and Billing have done a superb job in terms of internal and external layout. If you want a sneak peek of all the interesting specs, here's the Octa-Core Ryzen 7 CPU, an Octa-Core integrated graphics implementation as well, 32GB DDR4 memory, 500GB NVMe drive, you can connect up to three monitors, there's Wi-Fi 6AX support, active cooling and Windows 11 Pro as an operating system. The specs sound great and you can see the size, the scale, the multiple connectivity ports on the rear side and the three USB ports on the front. So far it looks great, but there are a few things you should carefully consider before going for the SER5 Pro by B-Link. As a starter, the processor inside being the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H is two generations older than what we currently have with the 7000 series. And it doesn't support DDR5. That's not a huge drawback because we know the difference between DDR4 and DDR5 is not that significant. And still the pricing of DDR4 is a lot better. The maximum configuration that you can get is by adding two 32 GB DIMMs. That would make a total of 64 GB of RAM. And that's more than enough for most use cases. The other, I would say, more significant drawback is, well, this port on the front. Uh, in some other mini PCs, which are Intel based, that would be a Thunderbolt connection. In here, it ain't. No, it's just a Type C connector. So, this mini PC does not support adding external GPUs. So, if you're a gamer, you should be warned that you can only count on the integrated graphics inside the CPU which is not too bad given the tests I've performed. And now with all these specifications out of our way, we can focus more on the use cases and the benchmarking. As a starter, we want to check the repairability and the upgradability status. Four Philips screws at the bottom, which you need to remove prior to opening it. Excellent work about the internal layout. Even at this small scale, there's enough room for everything. As mentioned, you can upgrade the memory up to 64 gigabytes in total. 
You can also upgrade the M2 drive, but unlike some other reviews that I've seen, this here is a Kingston NV2 model which is running TLC Flash and it wouldn't suffer from performance degradation under sustained riding stress. As you're going to see from the tests, read and write speeds are excellent and are going to guarantee solid performance even when it comes to intensive tasks like video editing. The Ryzen 5000 series do not support PCI Express 4.0, meaning that the NVMe is going to be limited to read and write rates of up to 3.9 gigabits per second. In fact, this is one of the most capable, cheap and good M2 drives and an excellent choice. But I also need to warn you that you shouldn't take this model for granted because I've seen the same box equipped with the NV1 or another Intel model. Yes, I've been lucky because this is the best out of all options at this budget. Apparently the wireless controller is also removable. Here we have an Intel AX200 chip which, again, could be swapped for another module in a later or a newer batch. With this particular one, I'm easily reaching the supported maximums by my home network and copying files wirelessly from a NAS device works as quickly as it works when copying from the LAN. Bottom line, a CPU failure or a system board failure might result into inability to fix the box, but as you can well notice, there's a good amount of internals you can easily service or upgrade. Let me be very clear about what this setup can do. Office work, web browsing, listening to music, watching videos, such kinds of basic computer tasks are something like a warm-up for the SER5 Pro. If you're buying this PC for just office work, you're gonna be fine with half of these specs. On the other hand, longevity and staying future-proof could be of course a reason to choose this particular B-Link model. I'm trying to say that this is a little beastie and among the best computers you're gonna ever find at the price of less than $500. Furthermore, power consumption is on the lower side and even at maximum load, SER5 Pro remains very power efficient, consuming less than the peak moments of my smartphone's charger. Just saying. I was positively surprised by the good video editing performance. The Vega 8 iGPU with this processor is really decent, allowing you to play a lot of modern games at acceptable frame rates. I'm not a too passionate gamer, so usually stick to the basics, but here's an example with Counter-Strike, which works quite fine, and even after two hours session there haven't been any stutters, but you can well notice that the GPU is maxed out during the whole time, and still I haven't lowered any of the graphical details. That's quite an achievement. It's fair to mention that the 6800H, the successor of the processor inside, has an iGPU that is close to 50% more capable than that, and is among the champions about the iGPU performance with its 680M graphics. But know that Vega 8 on 2000 or 3000 series is considerably slower than what this B-Link model is equipped with with its 5000 series processor. So again, it's kind of the sweet spot. Note that for as long as the box is really stressed, so is the fan and there's considerable amount of noise you're gonna be able to hear. There are ways to control the fan behavior in the BIOS, I would recommend to stay with the defaults though. As for the software, you know, Windows 11 Pro, you can of course go for Linux distributions, but you're gonna be on your own in terms of support and drivers. It comes pre-licensed, the professional edition is of course a lot more capable than the home edition, and for the fact that your software doesn't require any extra fees, I feel that SER5 Pro is a lot more tempting than what you think. Eventually, did I stumble across any drawbacks? Yep, there is no Thunderbolt support, the fan is a bit noisier than expected, and that's it, there's nothing else I could criticize. My personal opinion? B-Link are hitting the sweet spot with their SER5 series, and the difference between the Pro and the non-Pro edition is just around $50, meaning that you should really think twice before choosing. And uh, with the Pro Edition, you get a Ryzen 7, you get faster Wi-Fi transfer speeds and a few other extras, but even the non-Pro Edition is really fantastic with its Ryzen 5 and all these fantastic specs which guarantee good enough performance in a 2023 setup. And look at the size, it's ridiculously small. Now, 
Before you make a buying decision in case you're on the hunt for a mini PC, I really think you should consider very carefully your choice. And in case you're looking for DDR5 for Thunderbolt support and maybe for an Intel based setup, then you should check the B-Links model with the Intel 12 40p which true costs around 200 good dollars more than what we are talking about but might be the right choice for you and as usual it's been such a pleasure to see you here on the channel in case you want to ask a question or comments you can do it down below and i will put in the video description some more information about the ser5 pro i'm going to put a purchase link which you can also use and a discount code if such one is available and i thank you very much for watching this episode and in case such kind of video reviews are useful, I'll be happy to see you again, therefore subscribe. Have a great day!